People have been asking me, Hey Chris, why didn't you review Fuse? Does this answer your question? Not only was it average at best, but it was just boring. I mean boring. It brought nothing new to the gaming zeitgeist, and I guess after surrounding myself with so many intriguing games lately, I couldn't manage to endure such a banal mess. Then there was Remember Me. Perhaps fate decided to throw me a bone, because just from reading a Wikipedia synopsis of this game, you can kind of predict that it sets itself apart from the norm in many ways. I planned on forcing myself to finish Remember Me even if it turned out to be as mind-numbingly plain as Fuse, but I quickly discovered that force would not be necessary. Remember Me is a single-player cyberpunk adventure game set in Neo-Paris, a futuristic version of France's largest city. The year is 2084, and a megacorporation known as Memorize has invented a new brain implant called the Sensation Engine, or Sensen for short. To me, Sensation Engine sounds like the name of a new age whorehouse, but I digress. The Sensen enables users to upload and share their actual memories to the internet. This gives Memorize unprecedented control over citizens, enabling them to establish a surveillance state over Neo Paris. The main character, Nilan, is a former agent of Memorize, who now fights for the Errorists, a group of rebels who oppose the surveillance state. And yeah, I said Errorist. It's funny because it's a geek form of terrorists. This game shows some major geek fan service when it comes to naming things, such as Slum 404, an agent called Bad Request, and a weapon called the Spammer. As a web developer, I will admit it's actually kinda cool. I'm gonna go ahead and end the plot summary there. Not only do I have a mighty hatred of spoilers, but with this particular game, I'm not 100% sure I could give you quality information beyond this point. Even though I've completed the game, my understanding of the plot is somewhat unclear. I get the gist of what happened, but maybe an agent infiltrated my house while I was sleeping and stole parts of my memories, because there are plenty of plot holes and areas of muddy understanding between me and this game. Could the holes in this game secretly be an artistic representation of what it's like to lose your memories? Nah, that's just silly. Without giving anything away, this is what I think of Remember Me's plot. While I recognize that the groundwork is intriguing, moving, and has a pretty solid tone to it, the visual artists have serious conveyance issues. Maybe the writers came up with impressive material, but oftentimes the game failed to elicit the emotional response it was looking for. On top of that, some of the desires and motives of the characters seem just dumb. And I mean dumb. If you play this game, I'm 90% sure you'll see what I mean, and if you do, please comment below. I desperately want to know I'm not alone in this one. Trust me, if I'm right, it'll jump out at you. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about gameplay. Remember Me doesn't really know what kind of game it's trying to be, which is usually a bad thing, but in this case it kinda works. Normally games that mix and match gameplay styles come off as messy and unfocused, but Remember Me appears to understand where best to introduce these diverse mechanics. Remember Me is an action-adventure game at its core, but it knows when to take a break. Brief sections of stealth, exploration, interactive cinematics, and even puzzles help create a deeper game world. When all you do is run around hitting things, you feel like you're playing a game. When you interact with the world in a dynamic and amusing way, you feel like you're living the game. And when it comes to a game like this, that's what every gamer is looking for. But unfortunately, despite Remember Me's rare blend of gameplay components, it does not fall into this category. There are so many little flaws with this game that they coalesce into one big one. Bad game flow. This game is unpolished or annoying in enough ways that it breaks the flow or feel of the game. This is primarily caused by the third-person camera. Okay, there are three types of third-person cameras out there. There's good, there's bad, and then there's holy fucking shit, why did they hire a first-year film student who also happened to be a chimpanzee? I mean, Christ, man, the camera view during any encounter that's in a tightly spaced area is vomit-inducingly jittery. Can this fucking camera keep still for more than three seconds? Honestly. On top of the shitty camera, we've got bugs, 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 and a character who jogs briskly anytime you so much as tap the analog stick during a fight. She also likes to use the shitty camera as a justification for having brief periods of shitty platformer controls. <sighs> but you want to know the worst of it? The absolute fucking worst of it? Oh, oh, here we go. You're in for a treat. The only thing I motherfucking hate about any video game is when the developers think to themselves, gee, do gamers have brains? <laughs> nah. And then proceed to implement some excruciatingly long tutorial sequence. But does Remember Me have a tutorial sequence? Oh no, no, no. Not really, not really. It just has a guide. 
that goes on for what feels like hours. Oh, excuse me, did I say guide? I meant a drill sergeant instructor who grabs your hand and hits you over the head with a game manual when you're doing something wrong. So when I figured this out, you can imagine my first instinct was to go disable this tutoring feature. Well, guess what? You fucking can't. And if you can, they obviously didn't want me to because I couldn't find it. Ugh, and to add insult to injury, they tried to make things seem complex, as if to justify the gameplay homework assignments. For instance, let's take a look at some of the core gameplay elements, and I'll show you how simple they really are. Remember Me's combat system works similarly to the Batman Arkham series. In fact, I prefer it to Batman because it feels more intellectual, whereas Batman feels kind of like a button masher. And remember me, you build your own combo strings using these things on the right called pressins. Yeah, try buttons that represent fighting moves. These moves are broken into four categories and you unlock more of them by earning procedural mastering power, PMP. Yeah, how about XP? In addition, when you punch enough guys and build up your focus meter, your mana, you can activate an S pressin, aka special ability. To be fair, this combat system is really well crafted and an absolute blast to maneuver, I just wish the game didn't have to hold my hand so much instead of just letting me learn to use it through the fucking gameplay. With that said, my issues aren't rooted entirely in aesthetical annoyances, there are technical issues too. For instance, none of the enemies are convincing. I wish beat em up games didn't have such static and uninteresting opponents. They all look and feel the same and they are so predictable and pattern-like. Four or five hours in, even with all this diversity, the core gameplay feels tired and repetitive. But going back to aesthetics, Remember Me doesn't look particularly beautiful. This game and many others are starting to really showcase how dated the current generation consoles are. But this game's artists clearly worked hard on what they had. The game world is not only immersive, but creative. I especially loved some of the environments near the end of the game, when things start to become more abstract. To be honest, the area where this game truly shines is its cinematic experiences. There's a really interactive cinematic mode to Remember Me where you have to pick apart someone's memory and change little pieces of it to make them remember something that didn't happen. These segments were my absolute favorite part of the game, but unfortunately there are only four of them, one of which was basically a rehash of the third. To be honest, if they had made these sequences the star of the game, I would have been much more entertained. In any case, Remember Me isn't a terrible game. It's not even a bad game, it's just an unfortunate game. The desire to make something fresh really shines through. You can tell the writers were onto something and had big plans for Nilan and her adventure. Unfortunately, a hand-holdy campaign filled with bugs, poor conveyance, strange character interaction, and less than impressive visuals really dulled Remember Me's cyberpunk message. It's a shame that an intriguing game like Remember Me can come so close to being an exceptional experience, but was ultimately held back by a coalition of minor issues. Final verdict? Above average, at best.